You've been charged for staying dedicated to the grind. You have the right to remain silent and keep the hustle to yourself or help others State with the game. State your name for the record. Romeo Holloway. R-O-M-E-O-H-O-L-L-O-W-A-Y. Is that your government name or street name? Both. So that's my street name in the beginning and my government at the end. Okay, so why Romeo? Romeo, I was called Romeo from a youngin' because of my pops. My pops had a real pimp friend that he grew up with. And that was one of his ace kumbooms, and his name was Romeo. Um, where's, where's your hometown from? So where you come from, man? I'm from Los Angeles, California. I was raised on 99th and Hoover. And then we moved to the west side. From the west side, my mom got a hold of me. And then she moved me to San Francisco, then Houston. And I came back to Los Angeles. So how did your upbringing be determined the man you are today? Um, it kind of goes off of my pops and my mom's their relationship. That's how my upbringing like actually had me a part of uh, just different scenarios in my life that brought me to right here. So what type of job titles you currently do, man? I know you was an artist, but I know you as a director. Okay. So I was an artist in the beginning. Um, when I first had a chance to actually be involved with the industry, I was at a young age. I was a runner. And I, um, I was a runner for Thug Life. So um, one of my pop's homeboys was a promotional guy. He used to do all the stickers and promotional stuff for a group called Thug Life. And I had no idea what, who the group was. I just knew a Tupac, I didn't know Thug Life. Yeah. So um, he gave me a chance to be a promotional guy on tour with uh, Thug Life. And from there, that part was my introduction to the business on how they was living. And I wanted to live exactly like that. So what is this transition to an actor and director? How you get on that side of the film? I got on that side of the film because I was the barber to a lot of stars. So I cut a lot of people. I cut John Singleton was one of the main people. And the Exhibit was one of the main guys that got me into film. So I worked on Pimp My Ride the whole time that Pimp My Ride was in the air. Um, and then John Singleton put me on Baby Boy. He flew me from here to Miami, flew me back. And I was able to be behind the scenes as the barber and like a personal friend to kind of see everything that the business was on the outside instead of the inside. And I was struggling trying to be a part of the inside, but that part right there showed me what I can do on the outside. So what do 9008 mean to you? 9008. Okay, so instead of me just representing Crenshaw, which is 9008, that's the district. 9008 is the area where it's Los Angeles hip hop to me and a lot of people that grew up in hip hop in Los Angeles. So it was where K-Day was first built. So the radio station, everybody that was big in the radio station used to have to come through Crenshaw. It was where uh, Boys in the Hood was at. That's where they filmed Boys in the Hood, 9008. That's where they filmed Baby Boy, 9008. Parts, parts of Menace to Society was 9008. John Singleton lived in the house in the hills and Cube lived in the house in the hills, but it wasn't the Crenshaw district. It was 9008. So that was, it's, it's like a whole hip hop movement of us when we was young. And that's where we kind of got our, like, like we kind of got our feeling of hip hop in 9008. That's the neutral zone. That's where Bloods and Crips used to be able to be neutral. So it's a lot of history. Yes. Yeah, a, a lot of history. history. Yes. Yeah. So, so did you trademark that uh, symbol or? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I have a DBA and I'm doing business as, and then I went and copyrighted 9008. And then I also got uh, 9008 as a stamp to where I can actually represent that besides the zip code, just as my brand. Oh, official, man, official. Now let's get back to you where you started filming, man. What was your first film that you you shot? The first film I shot? Yeah. The first film I shot on my own was my homeless show. Outside of that, I've been a part of a lot of shows. I wrote... I wrote a couple synopsis for shows and they got picked up. That's how I was able to get money off of shows. Okay. Um, but the first one that I actually shot was my homeless show. Yeah, so, so you was spent time being homeless? Yeah, I spent time being homeless. It was a situation. I was with a very big management team. And uh, that management team kind of like just started crumbling. And it was it, it had to deal with um, like a different dynamic of myself because I was in a like a hood world of in in 
music, you know, rap yeah. world and, you know what I'm saying, more of a ghetto world of music. Then I got uh, assigned to a management team that was strictly more of like a white world of music, a white world of entertainment. So I moved from that to something I didn't have no idea about. Um, so when it all came down, basically the lady I was signed to, she ended up getting a, a, a implant breast, a breast implant, and it went wrong. So basically when she was, she was diagnosed where she might die, she came back and kicked everybody out and fired everybody from the firm. And mm -hmm. it was a very, very big firm. So how did you come, how did you get funded for the homeless projects? I was hustling. So um, all the money that I have saved up, I used for the cameras. Um, I used for the new computer, the laptops that I had, and I used for the, like everything that I needed, the hard drives and everything like that. So the money that I had already saved up, that was my funding. So back in high school, was this your dream or vision? Are you living in your purpose? Back in high school, my dream and my vision was not where I'm at right now. I surpassed my dream and my vision. Um, I just wanted to be on records. I went to rap and I did all that. Um, I ended up with a song with Cube and I ended up on the Westside Connection. I ended up on a couple records. I ended up with, with Corrupt. I ended up with Exhibit. So basically my thing was to be accepted by the artist that was major and I ended up being accepted. So I surpassed, I surpassed my dream of being in high school. So now my dream is very much bigger. So let's talk about your childhood, man. Why did you move so much as a child? Okay. Uh, let me see. How can I put this? All right. So my dad was a drug dealer, and then he used to be a pimp. And in the 70s, that was kind of like, you know what I'm saying, what was going on for them. For like, you know what I'm saying, basically my dad and his friends. Uh, when I was born, my dad didn't reach the hospital on time to see my birth, and my mom told on everybody. So she told on a lot of gangsters, and she told on a lot of pimps. So she was on the run. Uh, when she first picked me up, it was it was certain times where I was with my grandparents and it was certain times where I was with my mom. My grandparents was like in Los Angeles on 99th and Hoover. And that was like the stationary place where I can go to. But my mom was the snitch. So all the people used to go look for my mom and I was I was the baby there. So I got treated in a, in a certain kind of way. Yeah. So she came and snatched me up when I was maybe like around nine, nine or 10 years old and she moved to San Francisco. San Francisco, she was on the run because they was always looking for her. So she moved from San Francisco, then she moved to Houston. And then Houston, by the time I got to Houston, I was maybe like around 11 to 12 years old. And then that's when I just start, I start wilding out. And I just start robbing people in Houston because I was like the LA person. And everybody kind of like looked up to the LA person. So I was able to do certain things in Houston. And then when I got caught in Houston, I got caught in Houston robbing somebody and they took me to my mama house and then she kicked me out when I was 13. So from 13 to 14, I was living in the streets. And then I found a way back here to Los Angeles. So you think she kicked you out because you was bringing heat to the, to the house, the spot, or what? I was bringing heat to the spot and then plus alone, like let alone that, she told me the stories of why she was on the run. And I wasn't tripping about that. It was her tripping about that. So yeah. I was supposed to be a calm kid wherever we went. Okay. And I was not a calm kid. Because so, I didn't like I didn't I didn't want to leave Los Angeles. So moving around so much is you learn lessons from different cities or different environments. Yeah. You learn how to adapt. Yeah, I learned how to adapt fast. Like real fast. Uh I never I never spent one year in a certain school. It was always nine months that school year. So every school year I've ever been in I've only spent that one year. So I was able to grasp one friend and then kind of like play off of that. So whenever I went somewhere, that was like, that was like my mind states, especially when I went OT. So if there's anything you could change in your childhood, would you change it? No, because then I'll be changing myself. I wouldn't change anything in my childhood. I wouldn't change the relationship. I wouldn't change what my mom did or what my dad did. Um, I may have not have been the person that I am today if I would have changed anything. Also seeing somewhere on the net, you manage your artists. Yeah. Is that part of your, your resume also? Yeah. I manage artists for the simple reason that I've learned from artists. And the, the artists that I learned from are artists that's major, that's made hip, hit records. And I see what they don't do to inspiring artists from the neighborhood or inspiring black kids that want to rap. 
So I just choose to manage artists and just give them the game. And then I don't end up managing the artist's career. I manage the artist's career until they can get a full blown manager to actually build their career. But I want to be so that stepping step stone. Yes, I want to be that. Yeah. That's not, not bad, man. Yeah. So in your life, man, what's your ultimate goal? My ultimate goal is to get paid off of my creativity. Um, I have a lot of thoughts and a lot of things that, not even dreams or nothing, it's just a lot of thoughts and a lot of things that I want to conquer. And I want to actually get paid off of that. Like I've seen people get paid off of that. So if you had a choice to be famous or rich with a fortune, which, which path would you choose? It's definitely gonna be rich. Like I'm hood famous, so that was good for me. So when did you discover you was a writer? Um, I first discovered talent in my writing and music. And I first discovered talent in my writing and the entertainment world is when I wrote an episode of Dr. Drew. Um, I had wrote an episode of Dr. Drew. They had wanted us on there. That's due to my management. They had wanted us on there due to my management. And I wrote an episode, and they couldn't believe that it was a it was an episode that was written. They thought it was that they, they thought that this was real. So they presented it to Dr. Drew as somebody that actually went through this scenario. So they paid me for that episode, not knowing I was writer. And I sat back actually on that episode looking at it like okay i actually wrote this and i have these people that's believing it now is there a difference from writing your rhymes and writing a script yes yeah writing a rhyme is a feeling off yourself and you want to express it writing a script is a feeling off of yourself and you're not expressing it it's an expression of other people it's an expression of a dialogue it's an expression of a transition so it's a lot of things that go into writing when you're writing a script. So this is the reason why you jumped in a director's well to get more of your input on a shot? Yeah, to get my more, like, more input on a shot and then you broaden your horizons. Um, I can write a verse and go spit the song and put the song out, but when you write in a movie, then it's a lot of, it's a lot of different technical things that you have to involve in writing a script or writing a movie. And then that challenges yourself. Like a verse doesn't challenge me. But writing a script challenges me. Who's going to say this? Who's going to say this? Where we switch right here? How does it look good right here? Okay, and then where do we go from there? So when you're writing a rhyme, it's none of that. You're not looking at none of them kind of scenarios. I watch a couple of your short films. Pretty um, cool, man. Um, how you go about casting? Do you, you know you got people in mind when you write the script? Or you just find that spot to get filled in? Certain characters, I have people in mind. Um, everybody else, then I just want the hood involved. I want to. I want to bring people that's never acted before in their life to act. I want to. I want to bring people that looks that look at actors every day and all day, and like, oh, I can do that, and then I'll give them a chance to do that. So and it's kind of opportunity to the hood. Yeah, yeah, and then it's kind of like a dream fulfilled, even if they don't want to pursue it. It's just like one, it's like somebody's dream. Like I wanted to be in a movie. Okay, you in my movie. It is out there forever. It's out there forever. You did it. <laughs> so what hab what habits help you make you successful? Is the consistency. Like to be consistent. Like to be able to throw things off and be like, all right, I'm going to keep on going. Yeah, I must agree with that, man. Because if you fall off and let it die out, you just... Let it wrap up. Yeah, you can deal with the world. Like you can deal with like a lot of a lot of people that I know deal with a lot of different situations that surround their world, and I don't deal with those situations. Like I don't deal with none of them situations that surround my world. I deal with creativity. I don't deal with a baby mommy. I don't deal with a girlfriend. I don't deal with the homies. I deal with creativity first, and then I'll go back to everything else. To now, kind do of you circle. bring all your creativity mode? Do you brainstorm with anybody else, or it's all you? Both. Like I like like I like this like I wake up thinking of things and then I'll call the homie or I won't. So I like I like I like people to be involved because I like other people's ideas. But when it comes to an idea that's planted, 
in my in my head, then I have to go off of that first and then then yeah. build. Yeah, and then build. All right, what advice would you give a young director that's trying to do this? Like, what kind of trials and tribulations that you got ahead of them? One of the main things is don't ever stop. Don't ever stop being creative. Um, you'll fall into certain things that make you feel like you can't be creative, like money, like how to shoot it, who you're going to have to do this, who you're going to have to actually produce it, who you're going to have to fund it. If you're eager enough, then you'll find all of that. And it starts off your hustle. Like right now to, to make some of the short films, I have a nine to five. I do Uber Eats. I'll go cut somebody here. And then I go sell some shit online because I want make I want like everything with me is legal. And you invested in yourself. Yeah, and it's yeah. legal. So where I can say, okay, I have paperwork and I'm good on this and this and that because this is what I believe in. Exactly. So I will hustle anything to make my thoughts. It's not dreams no more. It's thoughts. Like the dreams is already gone. So it's thoughts. I would do anything to make these thoughts come to reality. Yeah, and it can't go wrong with investing yourself, man. So what's in your deck? What's what's the best type of camera this to shoot with, or what do you shoot with, and do you expect to buy an upgrade down the line? When it comes to the camera, that part doesn't matter to me. It comes to the vision. Like I can edit something off of somebody's iPhone. Like if that's what you like, if you believe like it's what's what you believe in. It's the, it's about the art and the craft of it. So. If you have something that you visualize and you want to get it off, you have to get it off without the means of wanting to get it off to where you feel like it's shut down. Like, I got to have this camera. I got to have this. Put yourself in the box before you even get started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't even do that. Like, the cameras, like, I get the top-notch cameras, and I don't know every name of everything. But somehow, some way, I do get the top-notch things that I need to get. Because um, it started with the Canon. Everybody wanted the Canon. It was a Canon 5D and Canon 7D. And it was a Sony. And it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you can bounce off of that and it takes away your creativity. Um, so you get the cameraman to bounce off of that. But as a director, once you put all them different hats on, people downgrade you anyway. When you say, I'm a director, I'm a producer, I'm an actor, I'm a this. So it kind of it kind of makes somebody like oh you do everything yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying I question myself with that. Like, yeah I really do yeah yeah but then yeah. yeah when you put it out there to somebody it's like somebody give you a business card and it says I do technology I do a uh, computer a service I do uh, I do apps. So you're looking at all this stuff and you can't narrow down. So it's like, it's you like gotta, you're not giving up to a hundred percent. Yeah. Everything's getting twenties. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. And your value do go down. It's like, yeah. 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 That's crazy. So you got to get that, you got to get that value in to go be the director and the cameraman. They ain't going to, they don't have to know that. So as, as hitting the lowest point in your life, how did you bounce back and pick yourself back up from that? Wow. That's a good question. Um, the lowest point in my life is very serious. Uh, the lowest point in my life is I was doing a homeless show and my mom was homeless and I was dealing with a homeless circuit. So I was dealing with Skid Row. I was dealing with Venice Beach homeless. I was dealing with Hollywood homeless. And then I spent 30 days, 30 nights. So I was traveling, I was traveling and my brother called me. He was like, you know, you know, mom's is homeless downtown. And I was like, yeah, I know. So I was on the train downtown. I was on a red line downtown, downtown, got off on 7th. And I walked across a lady and it was my mom homeless. That was probably the lowest part of my life. Yeah, that's deep right there, man. And she had bags full of just some bullshit. Like, and I just looked like mom and she wanted to be homeless. But at the same time, mom kicked you out when you was 13. So you didn't have like a little spite in your heart to see her on her, her, her loins? Nah. Nah, nah. Um, one of the reasons I did the homeless show is because I wanted to get the story of the people. Like it wasn't just doing a homeless show. Like I was homeless when I got kicked out and I was just at a park and this dude started telling me a story and I just ran and got my camera and he was gone. So I just started searching. So the, the lowest part of my life was walking across my walking across my mother downtown off of the train station. I got a camera and I'm shooting a homeless show and I see my mom homeless and she's homeless 
because she wants to be. She gets money every month. It's like she's homeless because she wants to be. So that interaction, when we first really had a mom-son interaction from 13 years old to that point, that right there was my lowest. And I just tried everything I could to help her out. All right, man, let's talk about some money, man. Um, I see you say you had so many hustles from Uber Eats, 9 to 5, to fund your projects. How do you know how much money to invest in your projects so you can still survive? Um, like, I, like I said, I'll do anything. Like, I'll do anything to make sure it's legal and make sure I can get everything off. The main thing, and this is what I teach all the youngsters that's around me, um, you have to narrate what you're spending on. So if you're spending on wants, then you're not able to proceed your needs. So it has to go off of needs first. You got to spend what you need. You got to spend for your living. You got to spend for your... So them Jordans ain't a need? Hmm? Is Jordans a need? Hell nah. So Hell more nah. tell the people what's a need. Your living. Your roof over your head. Your mama bills if you're at your mama house. Your cell phone bill because you're on the phone. Like the things that you need to do in a day, you have to spend for that. And then you got to make some money for what you want. Unless you got somebody that's just going to invest. Like, you know what I'm saying? When I was dealing with the neighborhood, it was like a, hood, a lot of hood niggas that wanted to invest, but they wanted to invest with their own investments, their own percentage, their own being around. If you want to do it yourself, you have to figure it out until you can find somebody that can invest in you. Otherwise, you have to spend for needs first. So it goes off of everything that you need in a day and everything that you need within a month. And then you spend off of the things that you want. So if you want something, maybe go ahead, go buy you something. But if you want your career to go right here, if you want to be enlightened right here, if you want a dope ass video, if you want a dope ass movie, if you want this, it's like you got to figure out how to pay for what you need first and then be able to pay for what you want. And you got to get all that money within your circuit. Like if it's a month, a week, a day, you have to get all that money in a circuit. So do you believe a broke man can make his dreams happen? Hell yeah, you looking at one. Deep, man. So are you and Exhibit still cool? Um, we recording? Yes, we always recording. Uh, I plead the fifth, and then um, can I get a lawyer in here? Oh, the lawyer is fresh out. Well, I'll call mine. Grind face. <laughs>